Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So in the previous session we have seen the difference between multi-threading and multitasking. From this session we will start the thread concept. Right. So as we have discussed in the previous session, a thread is a lightweight process and it is an individual part of a running program. So a group of threads will combinedly call it as a program. So all these threads will be working concurrently. Then, now here a thread is also having a life cycle. So how the thread is created, how it will be processed and how it will be terminated. So everything will be done in a number of states. So that's we call it as a life cycle states. Now let us see the thread life cycle. So whenever a thread is created, that will be in a new state. Whenever a thread is created. So here in Java, a thread is a class. Right? So we know that a class consists of a number of methods, variables, constructors and so on. Right? So here also a thread class consists of a number of methods. So in order to access those methods of a thread, first we have to create an object for a thread that we call it as a thread. So that creation, after that creation of that object, then the thread will be in this new state, new born state. Next. Immediately after the newborn state, there is another state called runnable, runnable state. So runnable state means ready to run. If the thread is ready to execute its task, then it will be in runnable state. So we can say it as ready to run. Or we can say it is waiting for a processor. Right? Next. If processor is, a processor is available, then it will be moved to the running state. I mean, if the processor is, I mean, the, uh, this thread is allocated to the processor, then this thread will be started its execution. So that state we call it as a running state. That means thread is under execution in this running state. If there is any IO interruptions or any other type of interruptions uh, occurred during the running state, then the thread will move on to the waiting or block. Waiting or blocked state. So, once the thread is under the control of a processor, if there is any interruption in terms of I.O. or any, any other interruptions may occur. So, if in such conditions, the thread will be moved to the block or waiting state so that the processor will uh, take over the, I mean, it, it, the processor will start executing another thread. Right? So, after the waiting or blocked state, after completion of this IO event, after completion of the uh, uh, interruptions, again it will move on to the sorry. Right. It will move to the running state or it may move to the runnable state. Right? If processor is, processor is busy, it will move to the runnable state. If processor is available, it will move to the running state. Next, if there is no interruption occurs and after completion of the process execution, it will move to the stop state. That means this is the termination, right? Termination. So here, 
we are having around the five states so thread life cycle will be having five states so thread uh, from the creation and uh, up to the termination it will move in five different states so whenever the thread is created it will be in new state Whenever the thread is ready to execute its task, it will, it will be moved to the runnable state. And whenever the processor is available and the thread is uh, allocated to the processor, it will move to the running state. And if there is any no interruptions, then it will automatically, after completion of this process, it will move to the stop state. And if there is any I/O interruptions or any other kind of in interruptions occurs, then it will be moved to the waiting state or a blocked state. So after completion of I/O interruption it will again move to the runnable state or running state right so here a thread is having a number of methods the thread class will have a number of methods so by accessing those methods this thread will be changing these states so here thread t is equal to new thread so after this statement we know the statement so this statement is creation of object for a class right so here we know that thread is a class so we are creating an object for a thread automatically that will be in new state after that t dot start there is a method called t dot start so here the thread always starts its process from the start method right so whenever we call this start method then the thread which is in new state will be moved to the runnable state and automatically and implicitly run command will be executed that means a run method will be executed t dot run so whenever this t dot start is executed implicitly it will be calling this run method so whenever the run method is called the program which is in runnable state will be going to running state and whenever I use a t dot sleep or t dot wait it will move to the waiting or blocked state and here after the interval expires so here we will pass some parameter like milliseconds so how many is in milliseconds the thread should be in waiting state so after completion of that interval automatically again it will move to the running state and here after completion of this task it will execute stop method stop method right so thread t is equal to new thread which is in new state immediately t dot start will be executed that is a start method and all these methods start run sleep wait stop all these methods are of thread class right so apart from these methods there are a number of methods available in thread class so we will see the, all those methods in the next session right so hope you understood this one the thread will be available in five different states so based upon the method called or uh, it will move the one state to another it will move from one state to another right so this is a simple concept of a thread so if you really understood my sessions like my sessions share my sessions with your friends and if you are having any doubts regarding this thread concept this is just an introduction right so in the further sections we will go in depth in thread implementing the thread right so if uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and keep following our channel. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much.